Hi, my name is Michael Matezzi, and I am the author of the Force figure drawing books. Um, I have the privilege of sharing with you uh, my ideas and philosophies about drawing. Um, so we're going to be in the next few weeks, uh, four weeks to be precise, uh, mainly focusing on this first, uh, this first book right here. This is the foundation book. I'm going to try and cover with you over the next four weeks um, Force and what it means. Uh, where it comes from, you know, how to use it. Uh, then we're going to talk about forceful form, uh, how to take force basically into uh, space and depth and structure, perspective and so on. Uh, and then we're going to round this whole thing out with shape and design and some creativity. So the paper that I basically use is Strathmore Newsprint. Um, the, the most important thing actually about this is that it's smooth newsprint. Um, you know, in drawing schools, uh, lots of times the teachers just have you working on rough and it's just not the same thing. It's actually very, very important that it's smooth um, and that'll make more sense as I go through the videos and I'll call that out to you just to, to make it really clear. But I always use Strathmore Smooth. This is an 18 by 24 pad. Sometimes I'll use pads larger than this, but typically not smaller than this for uh, the use of figure drawing. Uh, when it comes to drawing utensils, uh, I kind of go and use many different things. The, the real trick is that um, the relationship of the tool to the paper is a smooth relationship, again, which is one of the reasons why it has to be smooth uh, newsprint. So, you know, it can be uh, anything, anything waxed base is pretty good. This Caran d'Ache, which I really like. Um, this China markers. Uh, and I'll, I'll even use like lead, what's called lead crayons. Um, and usually like 6 to 9B, just really soft. Uh, I don't use, uh, what do I not use? I don't use charcoal and I don't use super hard leads. I mean, a super hard lead would basically rip a hole uh, in the paper because it's like drawing with a knife. So um, again, it's that, it's that slickness that I'm looking for. Uh, what you'll also see me using throughout this video, uh, just to clarify um, the drawings and sort of what's hiding behind them uh, is this Strathmore uh, layout bond. Just really great and has a great level of um, transparency or opacity to it, however you want to look at it. You know, just the right amount for me to see through and yet opaque enough, you know, to draw on top of. So again, it'll be, you know, Strathmore smooth newsprint, uh, the layout bond, and then I'll probably be mostly with dra uh, wax utensils throughout uh, the video. So. So let's get started. Uh, I'm just going to start with force itself and, you know, it's like, why, why force? What does it mean? Um, so, you know, I, uh, I, I learned, I was very fortunate actually myself in, um, when I went to school, having instructors that really taught me to admire and appreciate, um, you know, the life found in the human figure. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that that's still one of my one of my loves, and it's really the way I uh, now perceive basically the world around me. And, and I hope that that's what I you know I get to instill in you, and I get to share with you over the next four videos. Um, you know, my goal is that you know by the end of these four videos, you'll be a different person. You know, and that's that's a that's a very big <laughs> that's a very big goal, but that's my goal. My goal is for you to have, you know, view these videos and say, wow, you know what, I'm actually starting to see the fluidity um, in things that I had never seen before, and yet they've always been right in front of me. Um, so that's what's happened to me, and that's what I'm going to try to share uh, with you. So let's talk about force. You know, I, again, I said I, I, I learned how to draw in a figure drawing setting. So because of that, um, you know, I saw life all the time um, in front of me, and, and, I, and I, I think that's a great manner with which uh, to learn how to draw, by the way. Um, so force, force comes from life. You know, to be, to, to sound like a physics class for a second here, you know, we, we always have gravity basically pulling down, um, you know, on the planet, right, and on us. Uh, so, you know, because of that, the way the human body is constructed anatomically um, makes our makes our beings have 
uh, this sort of back and forth motion, which I'm going to discuss with you a little later and, and how it actually functions. But what I've done within the books is said, you know what, there is such a thing as force, okay? Uh, it's right there, right here. All right, and force um, is an idea. And I think what was um, sort of revolutionary in the books when it comes to the idea of drawing um, is that line, right? That now um, we're trying to we're trying to basically present ideas through line. And that's, that's the real big change. If you leave with anything um, from this video, uh, I'd say the most important thing to leave with is, oh, you know what? From now on, when I'm drawing, uh, I understand that there's thoughts that go behind every mark that I put down on the piece of paper. Um, and it, that's, it may sound a little daunting, but at the same time, very exciting uh, to be aware of just what you're capable of. So, so if we stick with this idea that force is an idea and that line is an idea, um, the main thing to focus on right now, since we're talking about drawing force, is what kind of line do I use? You know, how am I going to best represent force? So I've drawn this one line over here already, as you see. I'll draw another one over here. So these are forceful lines. You know, why are they forceful lines? Well, to get down to specifics, uh, there's a few things that I did in actually executing them, uh, the way I actually drew them. Uh, and that they're very important uh, because typically, here I'll draw this little box down here. Typically, make sure I don't go off camera here for you guys. Typically, um, Typically what I see in classes is people drawing like this. Or they'll draw like this. And there's there's thought, you know, there's a certain kind of thought behind each one of these, right? There's number one and number two. This person um, is typically concerned about accuracy. And, and you know, and it almost, uh, if, if I dare put it out there, and this is just after years of draw, you know teaching thousands of of people at this point, this is usually uh, this usually comes from fear, fear of uh, making a mistake. Basically, you know, it's like oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I got to be careful as to how um, I do this, and it's got to be right, and ah, uh, and you know, you see them like crumpling up the piece of paper and throwing it in the garbage, and huffing and puffing, and you know, just really frustrated, and and I feel you know I feel for them because I've been there <laughs> myself. And, you know, you really want to do a good job. Um, and the irony is that your frustration that you cause yourself leads you to the exact opposite of drawing in a forceful, um, more human manner. Um, and that is the irony. So this person is a little, a little trickier. Sometimes this kind of drawing is, I don't really care, so I'm roughing things out. Or... Um, it's not so much about caring. They might be just really sloppy, uh, you know, not organized. There's, there's numerous reasons that this kind of thing happens. And what I'm trying to um, teach you guys today, again, is this kind of stroke. So it looks like I'm just putting a line down on a piece of paper, but let's really break down what's happening. So what I'm doing, first of all, is I'm not drawing at the beginning. I'm my hand is in motion, and if I were using the whole sheet of paper, it would be my, my wrist is in motion, my arm is in motion, I would be doing something more like this. You know, I, I would start like trying to feel out uh, the force of what I'm drawing. So if I were looking at a figure or even drawing from my imagination, I'm kind of air drawing first, right? I'm not touching the page. I'm kind of like ramping up. It's like, oh, I want to I wanna get this, you know, let's, let's take this one that I did in the middle here. So I, I want energy in my mind before that line goes down. I'm thinking I want energy to sort of peak right here, right? So I'm air drawing, I'm air drawing into it, and then I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I wanna, wanna get that to push in there like so, right? So this first line, this these lines that I just drew, these are lines. Uh, these lines I call them directional, uh, directional force. I write fast, and then I end up <laughs> skipping letters, but. Um, so this directional force, why is it called directional force? It's called directional force because I'm taking the idea of energy and I'm directing it from one place to another. 
So in essence, um, you know, if we if we break down this line, now let's go to another sheet of paper. If we break down that one line, um, it has numerous things within it. Okay, it has here. I'll draw it again. Okay, there's three parts to just the line itself. Okay, there's what I call the beginning, and there's like the middle or the event, and there's sort of the end, or even better is really like um, going to, and this would be coming from. Okay. So first of all, I, you know, I, I, I was in motion drawing it. I drew it with force. That's very different than me going like this. Right? <laughs> I'm kind of crawling along here. I'm not doing either one of the marks that I just showed you, but I'm just kind of super slowly crawling along instead of saying, you know, I, I want to really feel the power that's, that's moving through this moment in the body. Right? So there's a coming from, there's like this event, and a going to. And the reason I'm labeling them like this is because this force is coming from somewhere, right? Where is it coming from? And it's going to somewhere. Where is it going to? And what's happening, right? Like what's happening in, in this location? Uh, so that's big, right? Like that's, you know, going back to this first page, remember force is an idea and the idea is now in the line. And not only is there an idea in the line, there's a few ideas in the line, right? We've got three ideas here in this line. Um, and that, that, <laughs> again, if you leave with anything, that is the drastic change um, in how someone draws is how someone thinks. It doesn't happen by accident. You know, what you are, you know, it's like what you are is what you eat, right? It's the same idea. Well, what you draw is what you think and how you think and what you feel about what you, um, what's in front of you. So it's the same thing, you know, like it's that black and white. And that's actually what helps me teach is when I look at people's work or even if I look at other person, people's work, uh, artists' work, or if it's student work, you know, after you've been through this enough yourself, you really understand to not take anything for granted. You know, it's like, oh, he, that mark really feels like something to me and it feels like it has energy in it. And that's because the person drew it with energy, right? All right, so this directional force, the other curve that I drew is something more like this, right? Let's do a couple of them. Um, so what we have here are three directional forces and each of them is slightly, uh, has a slightly different curvature to them. Um, the reason for that is there's a second force. So the first one was uh, directional, right? It's number one. Um, let me write that lower, number one. Number two, is called applied. So I'm drawing a directional force, but as I'm drawing it, based on where its like apex, where its apex is, there is applied force, right? Right in there, right in there, right in there. So there's another force, a sort of invisible one that is pushing upon that first one, that directional force, kind of like my fingers here, like pushing upon that line. Imagine the line was straight, right? Like here it's straight and it was straight, but then I pushed upon it and I got this from it, right? So this force pushing upon it, pushing upon it, pushing upon it. And each one of these has a different amount of applied force on it, right? This one, uh, let's say it's A, B, and C. B has the most amount of applied force pushed on it, right? So, you know, it's like kind of pushed on it, boom, really pushed on it and very subtly pressed upon it. So there it is, right? We have directional force and we have applied force. All right, so that's what we're really gonna be covering today. I thought I would just show you some drawings uh, that have these ideas within it, okay? So this is the one that you, uh, I think you saw on the Strathmore site. And I hope that going, you know, seeing what we just discussed, um, you get a sense of what's going on here. Look, here's here's directional force, right? And here's applied force. And here it happens to be really obvious because the model was holding on to this this rope and like pulling into his body, right? So you had this big curve and you had this straight, right? So 
you know, abstractly speaking, you had something that was like this, right? It was like this and like this. All right, you had this applied force and this directional force, right? And and that's that's a new way again of looking at things. You know, it's not just looking at them for their surface value, um, meaning you know, typically people learn how to draw with like measuring and measuring angles and tone and such, uh, that there's more going on, you know, especially in something that's alive, maybe not like a chair, although if the designer designed it with the ergonomics of force in it, you could find that there too. But um, in a human being or an animal or a plant, um, something that's alive, you're going to see these different types of forces. So um, I'm going to conclude there. Um, and then next week, we're going to talk about the next step in force. Thanks again, and I'll see you then. Bye.